Hey, this is Kevin Phillips and welcome to this video in which I am going to be modeling this Donkey Kong arcade cabinet, just the, the basic cabinet that is, in Autodesk Maya. Now I've got two of these videos on my YouTube channel. This one is Maya, the other one is done in Lightwave 3D. And the reason I've done uh, the same project in two different applications is just to demystify the uh, whole notion that there's a kind of a complexity issue between different applications and some things are faster to work than others. Now it's kind of true in some cases, but I want to show you the similarity in workflows and how things are not that different. So let's get started with the Maya uh, version of this uh, project. And I've got Maya here. And I'm going to go, I'm just going to turn off these grids. I always find them a little annoying. Okay, I might leave this one on for a sec. Okay, I've got my front and my side views down here. I'm going to go view, menu, now I'll say uh, import image, front, thank you. And in this view port. Image plane, import image, side. Okay, so I've got a couple of reference pictures that I'm going to be using as my guide for modeling on. Now, if you wanted to get these for yourself, um, all you need to do is go to this website called jackobud.com, click on the arcade cabinet plans, and you'll find them all sitting here. This is a really nice website with full-size plans um, that you can download in both JPEG and EPS format that you can use for building your own actual machine, like physical machine, which makes them perfect for 3D modeling reference. Okay, back to Autodesk Maya. Now, I need to just uh, wash these back a little because uh, these are a little too bright and they're going to be hard to see the geometry on, so uh, let's go to the settings for this viewport. Image plane, shape 1. I'm going to knock back the off again, 0.3 just to fade it back. I'm going to scroll it down. I'm going to just push it off the grid, so uh, away from the camera, which is in Z axis. So we'll say minus 30. Okay, you notice up here it's pushed it away. And the whole reason is because these tend to be like a flat plane with a picture on it. And if you model anything in negative Z on the grid behind this image plane, it will kind of sit behind a polygon, really. So I like to push them off the grid. Okay, and I'll also say, well, I don't need it in this 3D view, and uh, the alpha gain doesn't really affect that anyway. So I'm going to click looking through camera, so it just shows up in this viewport. Okay, I'm going to click in this viewport, and I'm going to go in here and say, uh, same thing, 0.3, just to tone that back. This time it's on the X axis, so I want to push it away from the camera, minus 30. And of course, I just go in and I say, looking through camera, done. Now we're ready to get started. So let's just close our attribute editor a bit. I'm going to leave this uh, channel box, this one up here, on because I'm going to come back and kind of do some setting changes in here later on. I'm going to start by modeling this thing here, which is an outer kind of side panel that goes on this machine. And we can kind of see that. If we go back here, we'll see there's like a, a panel on the side here, and then we have the machine on the inside. So let's go here. Let me go in here. I'm going to go to the mesh menu and I'm going to use oops, a tool called Create Polygon Tool. And this lets me click and create a polygon point by point, like so. And I'm going to worry about being too accurate for now. I'm just going to get it pretty close. I'm going to fine tune things in here and push return to finish that. Okay, let's uh, put it in shaded mode, makes it a bit easier to see. And I'll use this little x-ray button so I can see through it. Okay, I'm going to hold down right mouse button, say uh, vertex selection. I'm just going to fine tune any vertices that are not quite lined up. So left click and drag over that. Go to uh, W for move. Okay, I'm going to take this and I'm going to move it across. Now what I'm doing is see these curves. I'm actually sliding the points across so the lines go along here and then kind of go off the edge of the curve and then they come down and they line up with this edge of the curve because what will happen is I'm going to round the tops of these and by splitting or rounding this corner or this edge it'll perfectly fit exactly where it should go. Okay, I'm going to take this point as well and just move this across a tiny bit. There we go. Okay, I'm going to do the same on here. I'm going to just uh, take that, go up a bit. There we go. Take that. Just get us slightly above. OK, 
Okay, that looks pretty good. This one I'm going to just move back a little. Now, handy tip is if you want to line these things up, uh, what you can do is you can use a trick that's common between the two applications, Lightwave and Maya. We use the scale tool and you drag this to the center to kind of just flatten out the scale. Now if I click on here and I drag, it'll snap into a line. Okay, now the reason it snapped into a line um, is I actually tweaked some settings in here, a thing called snap scale. You can bring this menu up if you hold down Control, Shift, and right click. Turn on off. It just means that when you drag that, it snaps to the center. When it's off, it's back to the normal, uh, the normal kind of scale thing that you used to with normal scaling tools. Okay, so back to our move tool. Let's move that up a bit. Let's take this one, line it up with this line, and kind of move it up. It kind of sits roughly at that uh, point there. Okay, same on this one. And then we take these two points. And we're going to use the whole scale tool again. Okay, I'm going to hold down control and shift. It's just easier sometimes to right click, say so snap scale. Pow, there we go. Done. It's looking pretty sweet. Okay, so I'm just going to go through. I'm going to just turn on shaded mode for everything here. Okay, I'm also going to hide this grid. I find these grids, grids in general, they're, they're nice to have, but uh, sometimes it's nice just to hide those a little. Okay, and here, I'm just going to uh, go object mode. I'm just going to move this across to the edge of the panel there. Okay, then I'm going to uh, use extrude tool. Okay, edit mesh extrude. And I'm going to just click the blue arrow, push it across, and we're done. And we can just use the select tool or press Q to turn off that tool. Okay, I'm just going to uh, round these now. Pretty straightforward. Hold on right mouse button and we say edge. Okay, it's pretty easy to select in this view so you can see what I'm doing. Then shift. Okay, actually just click it first because it's the first one. So select that edge. And we'll just come down the bottom. Shift and we'll click on that edge. Okay, and the reason I'm doing these three edges is because they have roughly the same curvature. Okay, and just get some out of the way as well. Okay. Now, <clears throat> I go edit mesh, I use the bevel tool to do a nice edge bevel. In fact, I have to use the side view because I won't be able to see how big that curve is. Okay, I'm going to adjust the offset. It's pretty good and segments about three should do it that looks pretty good yep yep they all look like they've uh, lined up nicely okay now I'm going to use uh, around these edges here so let's go to the right mouse button go edge that one oops push Q to turn off that tool that one Do shift go that one Again, going to run that tool again. Now, a nice shortcut in Maya is the G key, it means repeat last tool. So press G. Okay, so segments. Oh, let's do three as well. Offset. Make that a bit bigger. Not bad. Got those curves there. Okay, now one thing that Maya does that's uh, a little bit quirky is that curves that kind of go this way versus that way because sometimes generate these extra kind of uh, bits of geometry here and to delete those we've still got edge mode on we just select that edge and the edge and hit the delete key okay pretty easy to get rid of delete okay now we've got uh, that 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 there's a tiny little curve on this and this okay like that and like that so let's uh, click on that edge and this edge and run, uh, well, just press G, say repeat tool, easy. Okay, now let's go in here, so segments mm, two, we don't need too many, it's quite a small detail. Offset, okay, we select offset and if we go middle mouse click and drag to the right, we could just give it 
tiny, tiny little curve like so. Press Q for select and I think we're done in respects of that. Okay, one thing that uh, Maya does, and you'll notice this, is when it's done like an edge bevel, where it's usually splits across that, it uh, kind of leaves these curves behind, or these edges behind, I should say. So, I mean, they're easy to get rid of if you don't like them. You just select over them and hit the delete key. Okay. Okay, do the same here. Drag over it, delete. Now, on this video, it's a little hard to see the selection marquee, I've noticed. So, what I'm doing is I'm left clicking and dragging a selection marquee across. Okay, that's pretty good, and that's almost we're, we're almost finished for the basic uh, layout anyway. Um, and I'm just going to be modeling just the basic details. I'm not going to go through and put the coins on and everything else. It's just to give you an appreciation of the workflow. Okay, um, great. So here we go. I'm happy with that. Okay, I'm going to go uh, object mode and select this object. Okay, and what I want to do is. Uh, I want to copy it, so I'm going to edit, duplicate, and I'm going to move that across to there. Okay, that's done. There's my two sides. Okay, I'm going to get a side view again. I'm going to just go through, and I'm just going to draw that inside part, and I'm going to be sweet as and finished. Now I want to hide these sides, so what I've done is I've selected both of them. Okay, just by holding our right mouse button, make sure in the object mode, left click and drag over the top. There we go. And I'm just going to put them into a display layer, which is just a nice way of kind of grouping um, objects in Maya for uh, quick uh, tweaking for, for display purposes anyway. So uh, what I did was I selected them, I went layers, create layer from selected, and I can give them a name if I want. Uh, side panels, there we go. Okay, and it just lets me click this little V just to hide them. That way I can kind of uh, draw this one out without those in the way. So uh, let's go back to our mesh, create polygon tool, go uh, click, and we'll just do the same thing again. Okay. Okay, I'm not going to be too fast, it's not perfect. Uh, whoops, that's where you hold the wrong mouse button, uh, I should say the wrong keyboard button down. And push return. Okay, it's not too bad. Okay, I'm going to just go through here, hold that right mouse button, we say vertex. I'm going to just take these, I'm going to use the old scale tool trick. Okay, you notice that without, oh, there we go. It's working. I left that snap scale on. Okay, move that out a bit. So I move that to about there. Okay, can use the old uh, scale tool again. Snap. Move. Move this up. Okay, let's zoom in on that. Use the scale. Snap, move, move it in. Same with this. Snail, scale, not snail. Okay, excuse my uh, grammar there. And the scale tool, bang. Okay, I've got uh, this one looks pretty straight. And that's pretty good. Okay, I'm going to uh, object mode. Pow. Just going to go across. Okay, we'll just uh, we can push it a little further in. There we go. And use the extrude tool. Okay, the edit mesh extrude or this icon, and just drag that across. That's right. Press Q, and there's the inside of our machine. So we turn on the side panels. There is our basic Donkey Kong cabinet. Pretty easy stuff. Now the only thing I want to do is I want to just round the top here because this the right mouse button go edge this does have a tiny little kind of roundness to it so you can see it just in the drawing there and we go uh, edit mesh bevel pal 
Okay, offset. In fact, in the drawing it's quite sharp, so I might just leave it like that. Okay. Final thing before I finish. Let's go back to the bottom here. Is we just have a little bit of a, a base block that sticks out there. So I've selected the face. So right click, face, clicked on that one. I'm going to use extrude tool again. Okay, and if I just, uh, in the manipulator here, I can just uh, click once on one of these scale boxes there. And uh, we just go to the center one for uniform scale and just drag it in. Okay, a little hard to see from the side view here, but if we uh, take that, oops, and make sure we have that scale still on. Do that, and there it is. Okay, I just need to move it a little bit across here, so uh, go vertex, move tool, and that one there looks pretty, pretty sweet actually, it's just a little bit out, there we go. Okay, in this view, you can see straight away that these ones could just have a little bit of scale love added to them. Okay, the snap scale is still on, so let's hold down Control Shift and right click. Turn that off. Go back to normal scale. Thank you. And we're done. There we go. Okay, I could probably delete these faces because we don't actually see those at all. Delete. Unhide that. And we're ready to build the rest. So I'll leave that up to you, but that just shows you the basic workflow that you'd go through to create something like that in Maya.